Aha! Got you. Just as I thought. My ears never mistake the sound of an intruder's footsteps. Even those of a youngin' like yourself. Oh, so you thought you'd just come waltzing right in, did you? No one seems to own these gardens, therefore they're free for the taking. Free to use as you please and everyone else be damned. Well, I'm afraid you've made a terrible mistake, my dear. Not a leaf falls nor a blade of grass bends in my garden without me knowing about it. <laughs> do you really expect me to believe that? How do I know you're not just another fool aiming to turn this blessed land into a house of revelry? You'd think the tales of all those lost to these woods before them would be enough to ward them off. But danger has the voice of a siren. They just can't resist her call. And nor can you, it seems. You just couldn't resist the chance to come out here, away from prying eyes, and make a little mischief, could you? A likely story. And I suppose that little bag of yours is full of gardening tools, instead of that bottled swill your kind is so fond of. <laughs> hmm? a, a trowel. Gloves forward, printer and writer. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. What's this? Rose grow. By my scarlet hall. Then it is you. You're the one who's been tending my roses. Did you also plant the new ones over there? I see. Perhaps I should not have been so quick to assume the worst. I suppose we're even then. True, you shouldn't have been trespassing. But you've done me a great kindness by helping me care for this place, especially as far as my roses are concerned. Wouldn't you look at that? You even took care to prune the canes before you put them in. I'm impressed. Oh, now don't go tearing up on me. Perhaps we could start over. What's your name? Hmm. A beautiful name if I've ever heard one. As bold and bright as the call of a song thrush. Oh, me. You can call me Calf. A pleasure to meet you. Yes, these gardens are mine. This land has belonged to my family since the dawn of time. Or so it feels. I confess, though, tis a bit hard to maintain with all my other responsibilities. I hardly even have time to tend the roses anymore. I'm fortunate that they're a hardy variety. It is a generous offer, my dear. I'd fain to have the help of someone as skilled as you. What would you ask in return? Nothing. <laughs> Playing the modest mouse, are we? Come now. What would you have from me? You truly need no payment. Well then, if you speak true, I'll gladly accept. I'd be mad to turn down a lovely soul like you, after all. Most of the time, my visitors are like apples rotten at the heart. I'd almost given up hope of seeing anyone treat this place with an ounce of respect until you came along. Caring this much for a patch of land not even your own, expecting nothing in return. You have a good heart, my dear. Tell me, what brings you out into these woods? Does the reputation not give you pause? You are a brave one, then. Either brave or foolish. <laughs> <laughs> True. Some might say they're one and the same. And what would you say? Interesting. It sounds as though you speak from experience. Uh, I'm very sorry, my dear. Your brother, he said. I see. He was last seen in these woods. A whole year. That explains the air of melancholy about you. A terrible thing, that one so sweet should be cursed with such great sorrow. Loss is a pain that never truly leaves you, does it? 
like a thorn in the flesh, which heals over before you have a chance to pluck it out. I can only imagine. I suppose I can't fault you for wanting to be close to him. You'd best be careful, though, my dear. If the rumors are true and the fair folk are alive and well in these woods, you don't think they might try and snatch you up? You never know. Their laws are different from ours, after all. Just because you can't think of a reason they'd want you, that doesn't mean there wouldn't be one. We all have things that we want. Things we'd give anything to have. Things we'd break all our laws for, each and every one, if it meant we could have our heart's desire. Ah, oh, don't mind me. Pray forgive my ramblings. You stay out here too long, you would swear even the trees themselves start talking to you. Now, before you head out on your way, let me give you something. I'll not let you walk out of here empty-handed. Here, take one of my roses with you. Perhaps you can grow a cutting from it. Uh, no. <clears throat> Please, don't thank me. It's the least I can do. <laughs> I can't imagine you would have. They're my own secret variety, you see. Hardy enough to last through all seasons, blooms that never fade, and a fragrance sweet enough to make the head spin. Go on. Try it. Hmm. Lovely, isn't it? Still, its beauty pales in comparison to yours, my flower. What's the matter, my dear? Feeling dizzy, are we? <laughs> Let me guess. You feel a warm, tingling sensation spreading through your body. Your mind is growing hazy, your thoughts slowing to a crawl. Your eyes are getting heavier with each passing moment, and sleep descends on you. Like a fog. Ah, oh, there we go. You see it now, don't you? No, my dear. It's not your dreams taking hold. At least, not yet. It's merely the veil starting to lift. Now that you're in my power, you're starting to see what I see. You can see things as they truly are. Both my garden and me. I think you already know, my flower. Or perhaps the question you're looking for is not who I am, but what. <laughs> That's right. A word of advice. Don't be so hasty in giving out your name to strangers. You never know what they might do with it. <laughs> no, my dear. I don't think I shall. On the contrary, you'll be coming with me. I've waited aeons for someone like you. A mortal with your beauty and gentleness, your reverence for the natural world. <laughs> Impressive that you're still awake. Please, by all means, keep trying to resist, my dear. It is quite amusing. In the end, though, I'm afraid you will find tis a fruitless battle. No mortal mind can resist my enchantments for long. Already your eyes are closing like a morning glory at afternoon's end. You needn't be afraid. I assure you. You'll have nothing but sweet dreams in store for you. Now, surrender your cares and let golden sleep reign. Just sleep, my flower. Sleep. 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 I shall see you when you wake. Good morrow, my flower. It's good to see you up and about. How are you faring? <laughs> Tis understandable. Passing through the veil for the first time often tends to muddle the mind. Especially for a mortal such as yourself. You needn't worry. Your wits shall fully return to you in time. Won't you join me for tea? You must be hungry. Tis impossible for your kind to go without sustenance for long, after all. Why so hesitant, my flower? What, do you think me a spider, lying in wait until my prey steps close enough to strike? Fear not, my dear. I don't bite. At least, not in this form. Come now. If this is an act of defiance, there's little sense in it. 
Join me, and perhaps I can answer some of those questions that are clamoring within you like the wretched Sunday bells. Be not afeard. This is not Hades. Eating from my table will not doom you to an eternity in my realm. There. Tis good to see your common sense prevail. Have whatever you'd like. If nothing appeals to you, just say the word and I shall send for something else. What did they call me? An apt question, indeed. They call me Dermid. I am the head of the Middlemiss Court. In human terms, you might call me a prince. And to answer what would doubtlessly be your next question, we are at my manor in my realm. Look out those windows. Yes, go on. Peer through the glass. Can you see it? Yes, tis the very same rose garden where we met yester eve. <laughs> Not quite. You wouldn't be transported here simply by stepping inside, if that's what you're thinking. After all, you visited the garden quite a few times yourself without leaving the mortal realm, did you not? No, tis more akin to a snare than a portal. Sometimes humans are lucky enough to slip in and out unnoticed. But when they have the misfortune to trip the snare, or else alert the hunter, then... <laughs> Before they know it, they've fallen through the crack in the curtain, only to awaken here. So quick do bright things come to confusion. Ah, now you. You're different, my dear. Rarely do I cross into the mortal realm, but I needed to see for myself whether you truly were what you seemed, before any magic took hold. I had noticed the changes to my garden, you see. Changes stemming from the other side. Suddenly the weeds were fewer, the soil was treated, spent blooms were removed, new rose bushes appeared, young and proud, a mortal variety. I hardly dared to let myself believe that a mortal might be caring for my garden. You can only imagine my joy when I found that it was true. Most humans that we catch these days are not but sanctimonious pirates, focused only on subjugating the land and its kin. But you, my flower... You are not a pirate, but a steward. One willing to give, to care for the earth instead of merely taking. As soon as you proved your intentions to me, back in the garden, I knew I'd found the one worthy to stand beside me for all eternity. Yes, my dear, I speak of marriage. I wish for you to be my bride. You will be my consort, my confidant, my lover. Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> On the contrary, my dear, you being human is a boon. While we fake can marry amongst our own kind, the politics can get rather messy. Occasionally, the unrest created by the shifting hierarchies has been known to destroy entire courts. But with a mortal bride, there is no such risk. You have nothing to fear from my kin. I promise they shall accept you. And if they do not, they shall answer to me. <laughs> mm. If you were a fae, this would all be part of the normal courting games. But something tells me you are quite serious. Amusing that you think you can simply refuse. But you're forgetting something, my dear. I hold your name. Meaning that until I release you, you're in my power. Hmm? I'm wrong, am I? Why, pray tell? <laughs> so, t'was only your nickname that you gave me. <laughs> uh, very clever, indeed. <laughs> True, a nickname has but a fraction of a given name's power. However, my dear, there is one other thing to consider. If you recall, back in the garden... You offered yourself to me. Oh, but you did. You offered to help me, did you not? But what were your exact words? If you want, I'd be happy to help you. You never specified just what you were offering to help with. And what I need help with is ruling Middlemist. After all, 
Should I have naught but empty air in the seat beside me as I sit on my throne? Should I be forced to govern with the whispers of the wind as my sole advisor? No. I need someone to rule by my side. I need you, my flower. <laughs> A brave attempt. It is true. According to our laws, you can't get something for nothing. However, you already told me that you needed nothing in return. Don't you remember? You willingly give up the chance to receive payment, meaning you can demand nothing from me, my dear. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. I can practically hear your mind scrambling like a trapped rabbit, clawing desperately for a way out. You are clever, my dear, astonishingly so for a mortal, but you will not be able to outsmart me. Albeit unintentionally, you offered yourself to me and I accepted. The bargain is struck. It cannot be undone. <laughs> Put it down, my dear. Even if that little butter knife could hurt me, I must warn you, my kin and I do not look kindly upon such violent displays. Put it down. Now. I would also advise you to hold your tongue. Such words are more fitting for a viper than for my future bride. Tis a dangerous game indeed to insult a fay, let alone one of my status. Oh no, my flower. Tis not you I will punish. Rather, it will be another who bears the consequences. Someone very precious to you. Someone who you had once thought was lost for good. That's right. You weren't the only one to wander into my garden, my dear. Your miscreant of a brother came first, along with his witless friends. Unlike you, they decided to treat my garden as a tavern, carousing till dawn, tearing up my precious roses with their revelry. First crimes. I bestowed upon him the ultimate sentence. He now sits in my prison awaiting his execution. And why shouldn't I, pray tell? He bit his thumb at what we hold sacred. His debt cannot be repaid. Unless, of course, someone else were to pay it for him. That's right. If you wed me, I might find it in my heart to have mercy. You promise your life to me, and his life will be spared. That seems fair, does it not? Tis long past the time for games, my dear. Either way... You shall be mine. But if you give yourself to me willingly, then your brother will live. What will you choose? I have many things, my dear. But I am not a liar. Tis both the blessing and the curse of the Fae. We cannot lie. Should we try, our voices fail us. Nor do my words hide a trap. I swear on my first bloom, I will send him back to the mortal realm alive and well, if you agree to my bargain. Now. Tis time, my flower. Do you truly love your brother as you claim? Make your choice. Yet again, I am glad to see your sense prevails. Give me your hand. Ah, your flesh is as soft as a petal on my lips. Fear not, my flower. Our life together will be a happy one, I promise you. I shall ensure you are satisfied, mind, body, and soul. Now, let's raise a glass to our engagement, to our union, and to you, my flower, my own beautiful rose. Good day, my flower. My one and only rose. What? No words of welcome for your beloved? Not even a glance to spare for the one who, by day's end, will be your husband. <laughs> one might confuse you for one of my statues in the garden. Come now, my dear. You must restrain yourself. Such ardent displays should be saved for our wedding night, should they not? 
Ah, oh, that February face. So full of frost. Tis a good thing I am made of stronger stuff, for if I were a plant, such a look would make me wither where I stand. But while I admire a flower that does not immediately bow to the wind, only a fool continues to fight a losing battle, my dear. Twas a brave final attempt, I admit, setting me a quest so long and arduous that I might not return before our wedding day. But, despite your best efforts, my flower, I have returned, my brow bound with a victorious wreath. Tis time you accepted your fate. Hmm? Hmm. True, tis a break from tradition to lay eyes upon you before the ceremony. However, any ill luck I may invite by doing so, I would experience a hundred times over just for the chance to see your face. You are as radiant as the sun itself. You will be the envy of all at the ceremony, and I for being able to call you my own. You still doubt me, my flower. As I promised, once your brother's debt is paid, he goes free. A plague or me and my house should I not keep my word. Now, tis nearly time. I shall leave you to allow you to make your final preparations. Farewell then, my beautiful Rose. I shall see you beneath the arch. Welcome, dear friends. Today we gather to celebrate the union between a Prince Dermid, head of our beloved Middlemas Court, and his chosen. Before they are made head fast, let them now, in accordance with tradition, present one another the results of their quests as proof of their devotion to one another. My lord, let thee be first. What hast thou secured for your beloved? As you requested, my one and only rose, I have brought for you an item of legend. One sought by many, but which few have laid their eyes upon, be they fay or mortal. I traversed realm after realm through flood and fire to obtain for you what you desired. Behold, a mantle of invisibility. They say it graced the shoulders of the once and future king himself. And now, tis yours, my flower. Take it, as proof of my love. Well, why not see for yourself then? Go on, try it. <laughs> what did I tell you? I'm glad to see you like it. <laughs> or not see, I suppose. And now, the betrothed, let thee reciprocate. What hast thou secured for your beloved in turn? There was only one thing I desired from you, my flower. Do you remember? That's right. From you, I wish only for a smile. After all, your happiness is my own. Well? <laughs> Perhaps you are smiling, but tis useless if I cannot see it. Remove the cloak, my dear, and let me see your lovely face. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Another of your little games, hmm? Come now. As much as I enjoy your wit, tis hardly the time. Our friends wait upon us. Remove the cloak and let us continue the ceremony. <laughs> no. <sighs> ah, of course. I see how it is. Leave it to you to find a final way to spite me in front of all our guests, no less. Clever, my dear. Very clever. However, I grow tired of your jests. Remove that cloak at once, before you make me truly angry. You dare refuse your prince? I shan't tell you again. Show your face! What? Nonsense. Do you intend to stay invisible forever? What king ever ruled beside one unseen? Think back to my words. What do you... No. Not but empty air in the seat beside me. The whispers of the wind as my sole advisor. No. No, tis madness. You cannot stay under that cloak for eternity. Where are you? 
Get over here, you saucy minion! You cannot deprive me of seeing you nor hearing you. I won't have it! If I want you, I shall take you as you are. You little viper! We had a bargain! I only said that you had to give yourself to me. I never specified anything further. <laughs> so that's it, is it? Trying to give me a taste of my own medicine? Or are you truly that desperate to get away from me? But think carefully, my flower. Think very carefully. Remember, it is not merely you that our bargain affects. If I should release you, you know what will happen to your brother. Do you still wish to tread that path? <laughs> Very well. If you want so badly to be free, my thorn-stemmed rose, then so be it. Let all the friends gathered here bear witness. I hereby revoke the marriage contract between myself and my chosen. As of this moment, they're free. There will be no wedding today. But do not think yourselves robbed of a spectacle. Instead of a marriage, we shall have an execution. Yes. Bring the human prisoner here. And let him be executed at once. Silence, my flower. It is time to reap what you have sown. Without your hand as payment, your brother's debt still stands. Now he will pay for your selfishness with his life. Oh? What makes you think you have any right to object? You claim him. On what grounds? Ha! <laughs> We've been over this already, my dear. You cannot claim him as a reward for caring for my garden. You already said you didn't want anything in return. What? He's not a thing, but a person. <sighs> Wait. No. No! This cannot be! You think a mere twist of my words will be enough to wretch yourselves from my grasp? <laughs> you cannot escape me that easily. Damn our laws! <laughs> Perhaps they do say you can't get something for nothing. But I am the prince. Who would dare to challenge me? What consequences could I possibly face? <laughs> I said what? A, a plague over me and my house, if I do not keep my word. No, 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 you can't. I, I, I. <laughs> Well played, my dear. Very well played indeed. It would seem, in this particular battle of wits, you are the victor. <laughs> then let it be so. Take your fool of a brother and be gone from here. But before you take your leave, pray. Let me gaze upon you one last time. I would fain see the face of the one who bested me. Ah, my flower. You truly are like a rose. As deadly sharp as you are beautiful. I have been fortunate indeed to be pierced by your thorns. Your face shall forever be noted in my book of memory. Now, take your brother and get thee gone. Adieu, my dear. And be vigilant, I beseech you. For should we ever meet again, rest assured, it will not be you who is victorious. <laughs>